Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and break it down into bite-sized pieces. Today, just as a thumbnail suggests, you are going to be tested. And if getting rich was easy, everybody would be. So we're going to take a look at uh, what is going on in the market and what I call second to last. We're going to take a look at all the longs that were liquidated. We're going to talk about how Bitcoin is dead. And we're going to take a look at uh, potentially a brighter outlook. So before we get started, let's take a look at exactly what is going on in the market. And uh, it is not pretty, I must admit. I mean, we've got uh, the market cap of 2.5 trillion seemed to have misplaced about a half a trillion dollars somewhere. I don't know where I put that 500 billion, maybe under the couch, I have no idea, but here we are. The But what's interesting though, is that the daily sentiment for Bitcoin is actually pretty neutral. I mean, it's like, we all know where this is going. So we're like, let's just get on with it because it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal to some people. I'll talk about it in a second. So Bitcoin price is 57.7, everything's down. Uh, I don't think we need to go over that. I don't wanna uh, pour more salt into the wound. So let's just, Let's just break into it and talk about what the heck is going on. When I say second to last, it's because you're going to hear a lot of things today. You're going to hear a lot of things, different YouTube channels. You're going to hear uh, stuff about, hey, you know, there's these bouncing off in these different levels. Hey, there's, you know, we're talking about the uh, the white cough accumulation. This could be one of those things where there's massive manipulation. We can take a look at different things that are going on as far as like uh, on-chain analysis, which we will do. But just so you know, in all the long run and what is going on, in all honesty, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not really that big of a deal right now for me. And I'm gonna tell you why it's not. And uh, this is gonna sound, take it as you will. But I will just say this, it's not a, as a big of a deal because I've already been here. And if you're watching this, this video right now and you've found my channel, this is the first to it, sorry, this is not the greatest day for you, especially if you're coming from the digital market space. But if not, you've been here for a while, you know, this is just a Thursday in all honesty. And when I've been talking about this beforehand, where I was talking about taking small profits, dollar cost averaging in, dollar cost averaging out, taking small profits along the way, I meant it. That's why when you see me when I'm talking in these videos, I'm not freaking out because it's not that big of a thing. First of all, I know where we're going. Second of all, I have profits on the sideline to where I can do the things that I really want to do. And this is the important thing. So. When we talk about this and you're like, well, Rob, you should have just held on for the whole time and really take, taken it all the way to the top. There is no top. That's the thing. If Bitcoin even goes to a million and uh, let's say you have a whole Bitcoin and you sell it at a million, people will still be like, you're a moron because it's going to two million. It doesn't matter. It's all about what your goals are. My goals are not your goals. So when I talk about these things that I'm doing, these are just the things that work out for me. So when we take a look at the market itself, yes, we can see that uh, quite a, a bit of a precipitous dip, as we can say. I mean, look at this. This is over the uh, four hour time frame, And uh, we've taken quite the plunge. Look at that candle. Ouchie. 56.8. And uh, we have been knocking on the door of 60K for quite some time, somewhere around here, it was kind of like that floor. But every time you hit that that uh, support level, eventually it will break down, and it did. And it's broken down, and then here we are. However, I will say this: if we take a look at the uh, at the actual RSI, uh, we can see that hey, you know what? As far as the relative strength index, we are oversold. We are now in oversold territory. Actually, then twice as it was going down, we hit it again. So right now. The Bitcoin and the entire crypto market is pretty much being sold off because people are panicking. I don't know why, but uh, you know, whatever. So that's exactly where we are. Now, some people will say, but Rob, wipe off accumulation. There's things going on behind the scenes. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, of course, there's people. As long as greed exists, people will sell off like crazy. And it doesn't matter the micro strategies and the, uh, and the grayscales that are out there that are just the diamond of diamondest hands. It doesn't matter. At some point, people will sell off and they'll do this and there'll be cycles and that's it. So you just have to just accept those things and be like, well, it is what it is. And uh, because I've been around the block, not a big deal. So we can say that, yes, there's probably some accumulation. There's probably some whale games and going on, but sure, that's what we get. However, Let's take a look at uh, just some things that I find interesting as far as like on-chain analysis. And if you missed the video from yesterday, it was me and Ki Young Ju, we, we uh, from the CEO over at CryptoQuant, and we just talked about the five different on-chain analysis uh, technicals you should take a look at. And uh, this is one of them. It's called Bitcoin All Exchanges Estimated Leverage Ratio, and we go above the mark of 2.0. 
it is uh, beyond high. And I can just tell you right now, as we just creep up here where time has gone on, people got greedy. And when people get greedy, you get slaughtered. What's the term? Pigs get slaughtered, something gets something, I don't forget. Uh, tell me in the comment section, but it just means that if you're greedy, you're gonna get stuck. And that's exactly what happened. Once we see here as this leverage ratio has been rapidly ascending, 0.19 was pretty high, and then we hit 0.2. And when me and Key were talking about it, we're like, that is ridiculously high. And what does that mean? Well, what that means then is that you're gonna have a bunch of this. This is where, this is, uh, this is not called, called coin glass, not Bybit. I gotta make sure I say that correctly. But this is all the liquidated, the, all the liquidations. And everything that got liquidated were longs. They were longs because people were like, I know where Bitcoin's going. I know where the market is. I'm a genius. You may be. But uh, in all honesty, when you start to do leverage trades and you go super long and you're way outside your, your realm of, <laughs> of scope of, of intelligence, uh, I know my limits, and uh, I'm not doing going down these roads. But you see people get long, and that's where you're going to hear about people getting you know, caught short, and they lost a lot of money. Now, I mean, kudos to you for trying it out. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you I don't do it. And uh, this is what happens. Because when, when you have so many people going long, all the smart money, reasonably smart, halfway intelligent, I guess, people will look and say, wow, there's a lot of people going long. I should just go short. I used to go short and make a killing, and that's exactly what happened. So we have on top of that, we also take a look at uh, what's going on in the last 12 hours. So long got liquidated, and then the shorts are like, I can do that. I can keep doing that. And now we're going to see even more shorts come up. Now let's take a look. This is uh, 12 hours. Take a look at 24 hours. Still a lot more. But as time goes on and things start getting uh, liquidated, 4 hours, 30 minutes, now you see the tide change just a little bit and people are like, you know what? I don't know, maybe I, I will or I won't, but you'll see that the shorts are actually coming up even more so. So when you see, again, where there's just a massive amount going one way, the other side, all the other side has to say is, hmm, a lot of shorts going on, maybe I should go long. And that leads me to one of my next topics, which is Bitcoin is dead. Bitcoin is dead, I'm sorry to tell you, pack up your bags. Go home, cry boohoo. And there's this great website called 99 Bitcoins. And this is what you have to remember right now. Of course, Bitcoin's not dead, just being facetious. But uh, if you take a look here, <laughs> this is funny. Even when Bitcoin, let me blow this up so you can see it a little better. Even when Bitcoin was topping out its all time high, which was around 68, 69,000, uh, you had people saying, like the spectator, a spectator it's probably, probably why he's not making any money it's just spectating so speculator would be probably good 67,000 68,000 right around here 67 they're like no it's a delusion it's a delusion and never go through that's just a month ago if we just back up over six months this is all the time that bitcoin has been called dead 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 and then of course this is i mean look at this it was dead at 29,000 it was dead at 32,000. Now let's take a look at a year. It's always dead. It's always dying. All the naysayers are saying the same thing as far as like not just Bitcoin, but the crypto market in general. Now if we even zoom up even, even farther, and this is what we really have to do at all times. Look at all of these deaths. Uh, it's over, I want to say it's over 400 times that the lamestream media has called out and said Bitcoin is dead. Wow, 40 times in 2021, it's pretty good. 2017, 124, isn't that amazing? 2017 when we had that huge bull run last time, uh, that was the most times it was called dead because of the pair of bull run. Look, don't get mad at me because you didn't invest in Bitcoin. That's just really what it comes down to. So if we take a look here and we think to ourselves, man, uh, if everybody seems to get it right, then why does the price keep going up? Now there's volatility to be sure, but that is essentially where we're at. And I think it comes out of this. If you take a look and see about what's going on, there's a bright outlook. I think there's a bright outlook. Take a look at this. I, I did this, this poll uh, about 10 minutes ago. Well, no, excuse me, about two hours ago. And I just asked the question. I go, look, it's January 1st, 2022, and the crypto market has been around $3 trillion, uh, with most cryptos trading sideways. I'm just saying, if that happens, what do you do? And I thought there'd be a lot more people going, I'm gonna sell. And this is over a thousand people have already have already voted. 
I go, no, I'm just going to either buy more, or I'm going to keep holding. So for all the institutions and the big players and the whales out there trying to play these games and to drop everything, I mean, it's going to work for some people. It is. People are going to sell. They get scared because they're just new to it. That's okay. You know, but as time goes on, you got to re realize that if we just kind of zoom out and see where things really are going, um, it's usually in an upward momentum. And this is why I say it's a dollar cost average in and then take a little profits on the way so you don't freak out when days like this happen and you have dry powder on the sides and you can do whatever you want with it. And that could be even buying these dips and things like that. But again, my goals aren't your goals and this is not investment advice, just investment opinion. So I think that's a pretty good, good play as far as where things are going. And I think a lot of people who've been here for a while understand that it's okay and it's gonna be all right. Now on top of that, I wanna talk real quick about some more good news. And uh, you know, I'm big in the metaverse now. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to understand it. I try to reach out to people way smarter than me, which isn't hard by the way. <laughs> a lot of people are smarter than me. But I, I signed up for uh, email notifications from Decentraland and I got this uh, nice email that, so check this out. In Decentraland right now, uh, the artist known as Banksy is selling one of his paintings and that is going to be through Southbees. And you can pick that up as far as uh, paying for an Ethereum. Imagine. And it looks, I don't know if this will come up. Yeah, let me read. So yeah, when I click on that link in the email, it drops me right at the place of Southbees so I can bid on the Banksy painting. So when we talk about like where things are going in the future, I think it's just good news because like when I talked about purchasing virtual land, People were like, a lot of people were like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But some people were like, I don't get it, which is okay. Uh, it, it's it's very difficult to understand, especially when we, remember when you first started to, to realize about Bitcoin, you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Now you're like, oh, it makes total sense. Same thing with virtual land and essential land and, and uh, sandbox and all those different places. But so like here, guess what? These guys, Southeast, they played a, paid a pretty nice price for this virtual land to sell to globally everybody who wants to come in here. Not just have one location in Southeast, but you can go in there and you can look at it and it makes a lot of sense to me. So on top of that, uh, there's also another piece in this, uh, this email that said, hey, guess what? Barbados, Barbados, opens the first virtual embassy in Decentraland. Last Sunday, the Barbadian ministry signed an agreement with Decentraland to establish the world's very first digital embassy and it sets a precedent for world governments. So right now, I know people are like, this market, what the heck? You gotta remember, it's just one day, it's just one hour. If we just zoom out and take a look at the future, the future's pretty bright, I think. And then lastly, I will talk real quickly about this. Even India, which has been kind of wishy-washy on crypto, at, at one point, the, um, uh, the world, not the World Bank, the... Um, high court in India uh, tried to ban cryptocurrency. It went back and forth. And now you've got India's prime minister, uh, Narendra Modi, I think I said that right, uh, continues to collaborate on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And just real quick, I'll just say that prime minister of India urged democratic countries to work together to ensure that crypto doesn't fall into the wrong hands, meaning he wants to, uh, you know, get a little bit around it and actually support it. That's how I read it. Meanwhile, the Modi government is working on a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies in India, which is good because they're not like, we're going to ban it. They're like, no, no, we want to get some kind of framework a little bit around it. And that's fine. Look, can't win them all. So uh, lastly, I thought this was the most telling. The prime minister under Australia and India's partners in the Indo-Pacific region and beyond to invest together in future tech to deepen intelligence and operational cooperation and develop common standards and data and blah, blah, blah. So look, a lot of good things on the horizon. It just, when you look at the price in one day, it just sucks some days. And this is one of those sucky days. But again, getting rich was easy. Everybody would do it and that's it. So look, if you made it all the way to the end, hope you feel a little bit better about what's going on today. Not a big deal. If you don't like the price, just wait, it'll change. But uh, if you liked today's video, got a little uh, uh, value, consider uh, giving a little thumbs up, a little like, consider subscribing. That's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.